Hi, this is Maps with Trent. Let's get a little bit of a green screen. Get that cotton out of the way. Chroma key. Okay. Perfect. Um, the video will almost certainly be choppy because it's being Wi Fi'd to the other room and then sent back through Wi Fi and then it's being sent back through Wi Fi to get to you. Um, but, at least in my testing, it kind of was mostly working. My face is frozen. It'll happen eventually. I'll move my, see, I can move my own head around. Oh, it says waiting to connect again. What the hell? always, uh, everything always breaks when you actually do it for real. Still waiting to connect. I don't know if this is going to work. Well, the good thing about audio is that it is connected directly to my laptop. Till the green screen. Yeah, I don't even know if it was a green screen. I think it was just like... Everything's messed up. We'll try turning. We'll get rid of that green screen. See what happens. Oh. <laughs> well, the green screen is off, but it's still no better. Look that. <laughs> I, oh, oh my god, it's back! What happened? I don't believe it. We're just gonna leave the green screen then. Uh, yeah, this is very complicated. I, I was trying to figure out a, a camera. Yeah, okay, well, you'll get emotion. You'll get... I was trying to figure out a camera and it, you can just use your phone, but you can only you can only connect it over USB if you have a Mac or a Windows machine. I couldn't find a USB solution for using an iPhone with a Linux machine that connected over USB. You could only do it over Wi-Fi. And that to me is very frustrating, but I don't know. It's it's what we have for now. So we'll see how we go. I wish I could tell you if it was like, what was the bottleneck here? Wow, my computer says it's running at 400% CPU. Love that. It's only got four cores, so... It says 403, actually. It seems unreasonable. Ah. Uh. Y'all are so sweet. I appreciate you bearing with me. Um, anyway, I'm just gonna persevere, carry on, and then at some point we're probably gonna turn on the old webcam. Maybe I, is that even in there? Oh, it's even in here. Yo! Alright. <laughs> to me this is very funny. I hope y'all appreciate it. I'm just gonna leave my myself there. Okay, so yeah, welcome back. Um, I was hoping there would be so much more. Uh, what am I saying? I mean, that doesn't mean anything. Um, I have another phone. Maybe I should set up two of these, two frozen still images. Um. Maps with Trent and Trent. I feel a little uh, out of it. I've been in the I've been in the code zone 
the last, like, ooh, apart from the weekend, the last week and a half, and I'm still recovering from whatever that means. Um, yeah, so I'm super excited. I don't know if you can tell. You probably can't tell because my super excited is the same as my just getting through the day. Um, but it is very exciting, very exciting, that, uh, with, it's not done done, but it's more done than it's ever been, and that's thrilling, to me, at least. Um, yeah, where to even begin? Uh, I gotta figure out this camera, because how am I meant to demo things if I can't give you a reasonable image of them? This is... To me, I lo this little, like, tripod stand is, is beautiful. I love it. Um, my choice of technology, perhaps less so. But uh, here we are. We'll, we'll figure out another solution if, um, if one appears. Okay, I'll stop saying nothing, and I'm going to start saying something. Um, so, with, I guess I'll just jump into what, what it is and what's new and what's exciting. Um, there's a lot going on and I'm definitely not going to cover everything today, but I'm going to try and give you like a, a pretty good run through of, um, the kind of different functionality and, um, try and demonstrate some stuff that was possible in the past but like never worked correctly and like other things that hope like were a bit buggy but I think are a lot better now. Um, so, oh, damn this, is, what is up with this stream? I really want to be able to like give you a nice quality video of this. I wonder what Oh my god, it's so hot. I'm just gonna restart this phone and see if it helps. It's brand new from the box. Bizarrely. I bought two accidentally and was like, well, maybe if it breaks one day. It was like, it's amazing that this piece of technology is like a hundred dollars now. That's bizarre with that's bizarre to me. Like, there's like So, with, yeah, I don't know why I like can't begin the words, the words are just there in anticipation. Is it going to connect? Hey. All right, this will probably last for about three seconds, so let's let's get started. All right, um, there's three modes. One, one, two, three. Three kind of general concepts of like what a sound is, or what a what width is. So I have three of them here. So eventually we're going to use them all together. But um, let's start with one, right? So, I just flashed these all with the firmware, um, meaning they, this is hopefully going to be the same as your, like the out of box experience or the post firmware update experience. Oh no, the video is not working. Damn it. I'm just going to 
keep going anyway and hopefully the video will come back here and there. Um, so right now, there's no lights on. To me that seems a little worrying and it's probably going to change slightly. So, fair warning, this isn't finished finished, it's just finished enough to share and get some feedback and put those last finishing touches on. Um, damn, I really need a better camera solution. Because that one's so far away. Manually trigger a screen grab. No, the phone's sitting here. It says waiting to connect to client. Record toggle? There is no record toggle. Unless this does it. Well, I love hearing y'all trying to troubleshoot the situation. All right, how's this for a solution? This is ridiculous. Wow, also the phone is about 1000 degrees. Clearly it didn't like something. Well, we tried. Oh, that's, that is the microphone. Hi, sorry. One day, all of this is going to come crashing down. Is that a political statement? Probably. to deal with it because it's all we've got for now until somebody finds me a solution or if uh, I just cave and use a Mac computer instead. I guess I could reboot this in Windows but it's too many things. Uh, I love you all like making fun of me slash like having fun. It's a weird thing. Okay so let's just get started. The first mode, the mode that everything boots up in, is pretty much the... Ooh, that's a really good idea. I should just not actually say anything about it for two hours. Just have you, like, on the edge of your seat. Um, the first mode, the default mode, what it loads in, is essentially the classic with version 1 mode. Uh, minus a few things and plus a few things with a different user interface. Uh, it's not totally different, but it is kind of... It's dramatically simplified. Yo, check this out. Oh, yeah. Now I can be orange in the face, too. Love it. Wait, that, this light can go to the... Yeah. Is that better? Marginally. Uh, this fancy light, it has color setting on it as well as brightness. And it has a magnifying glass.
it's a tape machine. I plugged the output to the speakers. I'm sure they're not turned up yet, but we'll get there. Um, and let's just plug in a basic oscillator. And this should give us some sound. What's happening is, right now, width is just passing the audio from the input straight to the output, and that's using a thing called monitoring. Uh, it's now configurable more than just on-off, but we'll get to that. So, uh, the first thing we can do is we're going to press play, and wow, that, that light is so tiny, but it is blinking, you can see it. Um, so the tape's playing, but there's nothing on it yet. It's a blank tape. Uh, but what we can do is we can hit record, and we're going to sample basically whatever's on the input. Um, nice and simple. We can... Okay, so, hopefully, we just recorded some audio. Um, now we can press play keep to keep playing, or we can hold down and press play to rewind. We can also do this now from live mode, so like while it's playing. Um, you can basically hold down and press play, and it'll flip the direction. And hopefully we're about to hear some a reverse of what we just recorded. Maybe? Did it really not work? What's up? Well, the thing is I didn't test it on this one, so there's definitely still some bugs. Let me try it on a, on a different one. I know this is ridiculous to have to do, but we're just going to try it out, see if it's any better. Okay. There's still a few issues with um, some SD card stuff. But, trust me, it's better than it was. Um, and I'm hopeful that things will be better. So I just did a bunch of things. Let's, let's cancel that, now that we have some control again. So, press play. While it's playing, I can hit record. That was lovely. I turn record off by just hitting record, and then I can rewind it by just holding down and pressing play. And maybe it doesn't like playing backwards for some reason. It was just working. I'm so confused. I played around with some ish, some things with um, 
the playback level, so I have a feeling that maybe the sound is there, it's just like not coming out because record's not pressed down. Um, I was adding some fancy CV stuff. So let's kind of persevere, we'll try and figure it out. Um, but, you know, so it goes. With record, uh, you hit it, it turns on, the white light's on. Um, the new feature is uh, you can do what used to be done with called dub mode. Um, you can change how much of the old material is erased. And you do that by just holding record and then you kind of scroll up or scroll down. And you see the, the amount above the toggle and you also see it on the yellow light here. Um, so the yellow light is kind of like the strength of the erase head. So when it, right now it's like halfway. I know it's impossible to see and I apologize for that. But that's where it is. So, and then as you kind of, you press record, the yellow light always stays on. So you know whether you're overdubbing or overwriting. Um, so this is playing backwards. Uh, let's, let's flip it back forwards. Now I can set a loop. Um, and the cool is I, I we, re, I, we, I rebuilt this um, specifically to make it more like a typical um, That was weird. Uh, more like a looping device. Everything is CVable. We'll get to that in just a sec. Um, so, you tap it once to set the beginning of the loop, and you tap it again to set the end. Simple. Um, there's still a few, like, sound things in there that were, that I'm working on. Um, but so right now, there's a loop, and I just put a tiny bit of sound into it, and it captured it, and because the arrays had like midway, it's like fading out on each play. So... So we can make these like, uh... Decaying things. They're cool, whatever. Um, that's not super exciting, but let's... Alright, so there's some sound in there now. Um, you can change the speed by holding play and pressing up and down. So you can do all this nice stuff. Um, while it's playing, you can rewind. So I'm gonna do it quickly. You hold down and press play. There's a tiny click. I'm gonna get rid of that. Um, so this is now doing the same thing, but it's just playing backwards. I still have control of it. The delay time. You can do this. Another trick, uh, another new thing, you can tap the loop button and it will jump you back to the beginning. It's no more like holding a loop and pressing up and down, it's just like, you just get a reset, that's it. The next thing, it's like play up and down, except you do it with loops. So here, I'm gonna hold loop and press down, and that's gonna, I think, power the loop time. So you can do like, you can make the drop, right? going that, that short. <laughs> Let's make a new loop. I should say, there's no cues. They're no longer accessible from the front panel, and I know some people are going to be pissed. But, uh, I think it allows the interface to do so much 
more in so much more of an intuitive way that it's worth kind of foregoing that uh, that thing. Um, there's a way to do most of it with I2C, and I think in a lot of ways it makes more sense to do it with a, with an interface that has more than just 10 LEDs to kind of show you what's going on. So that's the big sacrifice. That's the big thing that the 2.0 doesn't have. But we'll kind of, hopefully I can convince you that it's worth it. <laughs> um, okay, so that's like showing the loop resizing. You can do, you can do it, you can make it longer as well. So, um, so let's record some more sound into this. So with this loop, now I can make it double, double the length. So there's a bunch of silence, because we only recorded half of it. One cool thing you can do is, the way the loop multiplication and division works is, you take the loop, uh, and you want to make it bigger. Um, so this is happening, that it goes to here. When the playhead eventually gets into this half, you can divide the loop and it'll take you to the second half. I think. Maybe that's not true, actually. Let's see if it works. Yeah. Great, okay, so. Some new sound, and I think we go up, right? I take it back, I gotta fix that. So it's meant to capture the whole thing, but this actually took the next piece. So today's gonna be like that. I'm gonna be writing a bunch of stuff down because part of why I'm doing this is so that I know what needs to be fixed. But yeah, there's this idea that you can kind of use, you can divide and like halve and double the size of the loop. And I think that kind of opens up a lot of really interesting possibilities. Um, swamp loops, exactly. Yes, exactly. It should have gone back to include the previous section with the new section. That was. That was what I was trying to show, and that's what did not work. Um, okay, that's the kind of basics of the loop section. There's a couple more things in terms of uh, panel controls. So that's uh, some basics. Um, so this is it's monitoring at full scale right now, yeah? Um, there's three three key combos that allow you to change three settings um, in the same way that you set the, the kind of erase head strength. Um, so the first one is the monitor level. Um, so you change that by holding loop and play together. Um, and then you can just change it with the toggle. Um, and it's continuous, so this is like about 50%. Um, 
So it just means you can do some kind of more interesting stuff where you kind of turn... You basically have control of the dry level. It's CVable, which basically gives you a free VCA, which you can do cool stuff with, but we'll get to that. Um, so that's the first one. I'm going to put it back on full scale. The next thing we can change is the recording gain. So this is independent of the monitor level. And what that means is you can basically get a VCA that doesn't affect the dry level signal, but does affect the signal going into the tape. And you do that with record and play. So there's only, there's like the top two, the bottom two, and then there's a split gesture, which is the next one. So the bottom two is the record level, because it inco includes the record button. Um, so you hold that, and then you can kind of... I can turn it down, so what that means is now if I make a loop, it's hard to see, you won't be able to see it on the screen, but the white, the white light here shows you um, the level, basically. Um, so if I turn down the monitor level, This is just to show you that it's like, the output is quieter, right? But it means you can layer it way more densely. And that's the real reason you want to use it, is if you want to layer like 30 layers of synthesizer, if you do it without attenuating it, you're going to clip. Um, like, there's no way around that. So this way you can kind of change the gain staging right before it hits the tape um, to get more kind of... Uh, more headroom. To me, that's nice. Um, the next thing is what I'm calling tape echo mode. And so, if any of you have played with the original, when you plug a cable into dub mode, which is like the classic um, th that uh, assignment, it would give you like at 12 o'clock, you would get overdub, meaning you just infinitely layer. Um, at negative 5 volts, you would get overwrite, the classic. Uh, delete what was there and replace it with something new. But at plus five, you would get delete what was there and record something new, but play back what was on the old piece of tape. And so I'm now just calling that tape echo mode because that's the only reason you want to use it is to set up a tape echo. Um, there's no real other reason, at least that I've been able to figure out. So tape echo mode just means you can do these like decaying loop things um, in a way that you can have stuff fade out quickly, but still get that first echo at full volume. So that's the real, that's the bonus. That, that's what you get from tape echo mode. You just want to hear that first repeat at full level. Um, to do that, you just hold, you do record and loop, and you'll see at the top you get a yellow light, that means it's regular mode. Click it up, it goes to white, that's tap, tape echo mode. So, we'll skip past this, um, we'll set a new loop, and I'm going to turn the record level back up, um, but monitor is still down. It's currently in overdub mode, so this isn't going to be affected by any of this stuff, but if we change the arrays head, To, to completely overwrite. Um, we're now essentially going to have a tape echo. So, you see, I'll play some sound in and then it'll take a second and play it back to me. Like that. Uh, you can
can then decrease the strength of the array's head just a little bit. And now... Basically, it just gives me a delay. Um, this makes more sense if you hear it live. So we'll turn monitor back up. So we have monitor again. That's the idea. Um, I think that's it. Those are the basics. Those are like the kind of the key ideas for like navigating with. Um, I get that it's not super exciting yet. We're gonna change that in a second. Okay, so the first thing, let's run through the CV. There's only, there's like six destinations. And the same idea, you can map them on the fly. So, um, steal a cable from here. I'm just gonna do one at a time, just for simplicity. So the way you do it is you hold record, just like before, and you plug the cable in. You only do whichever one you plug in. So either jack can be assigned to any CV, and they're both. You initiate that by holding record while you plug the jack in. The cable in. So I hold record, plug it into this, and now it shows me the, the mapping. At the moment, um, both play and record are lit, which says it's doing... Um, oh, recording level, right? Um, I haven't figured out the defaults yet, so you won't have to do this the first time. Um, you'll have like the two best things. Uh, but I haven't figured out what they are yet. So, the first thing we can do is we control the tape speed. Um, oh, there's also like nudge, but it doesn't sound good yet, so I'm not worrying about it. So basically what happens is it flashes whichever one I'm about to choose, and then I just press down to confirm it. But, like, it's not plugged into anything, so... Let's make a... I just want to make a... Plain loop. So with the CV, I'm controlling like a linear offset to the tape speed. Um, This adds to the play control. But you can take it so far it goes backwards as well. This is while it's playing. So this is during play. I can still... You can still use the, the panel to change them as well. So that's reversing it while it's happening. That's pretty weird, but I mean that's kind of the nature of dynamically controlling a tape head, tape head speed. Ooh, I'm sweating so much I can't turn the fan on because then there's just too many fans in here. So I'm sorry. Okay, so controlling the tape speed while it's stopped, not currently working. CV linear speed uh, doesn't work when stopped. We'll, maybe we can try and make some nice music soon. <laughs> um, okay, let's move on. Let's go. The next thing we control is the right side, so the white light on play, this is exponential tape speed. So, again, you press down, you flick down to kind of confirm it. Um, let's overwrite that sound with just... Oh, 
right, so we just have like a plain uh, confuse what I've done to myself there, but you know that's that's kind of par for the course. What I'm gonna set up is I'm gonna use Druid over here real quick to uh, start I was trying to resize this So I'm just going to set up uh, a little output. I'm going to make this is using the new Crow firmware. Um, there's going to be a. It's already finished. I don't know why we haven't released it, but it's kind of been we've been beta testing it, and there's like one or two issues, but I think I think it's pretty much good. It doesn't have this stuff in yet, but I'm about to post that after this stream. Uh, what we need to do, output one, uh, let's make it an LFO, which is like two seconds and has an amplitude of only 0.7, which gives us like a little more than an octave. Um, that will start it. So right now this is just a static tone recorded into width, and it's just being basically sequenced by a little fault prop from the throat. Um, that's the idea. We can... I'm just using Coldmack here to like offset that. Um, so you can use that, I would use it kind of for like sampling style stuff, um, and you can use it in conjunction with the loop button which allows you to reset to the beginning of the loop. Um, I actually don't think I've tested that. Are we even game to try? Actually, I don't even know what it does. Yeah, I think it's not what it does. I gotta make a note of that. Um, CV but basically you'll be able to kind of have one option to reset to the beginning of the loop and another option to... Wait, does it already do zoom? Let's find out. So... I don't know what this is going to do, but let's try it out. Maybe not anything. Whoa. Alright, I don't know what that's happening. What what that is doing, but you know, that's okay, that's okay. Don't forget to drink water, thank you. That's usually my line, but I appreciate you. Um, we got 10 minutes before I'm going to take a break, even though we've done nowhere near half of what we're meant to do. Um, what's the latency like? It's pretty uh, minimal. Like, I've. You can kind of bash, like, at least 100 messages a second, if not more. We'll, we'll do some cool stuff. 
Um, it shouldn't be on. Okay. Uh, we can also see the the volume going in, and we can do the monitoring, the record level. It's cool because you can get you can just do like nice VCA stuff. So let's just do that quickly. Um, it's a cool way to add like. You don't have to have a separate VCA to do like vibrato effects and stuff. So I'm going to control the air of mangrove. Is this what I want to do? No, I'm just I'm just, I'm gonna control with with just friends, just as an LFO. Um, so here I'm gonna select. Uh, oh. We haven't done record. Record's nice. So this mode will basically allow you to kind of dynamically control, but dynamically sweep between recording off and recording on, um, where recording on takes into account whatever your like erase head level is set to. So that means um, you can kind of fade in and out of overriding with like a with. I just have to show you. Let's just make let's just make it happen. There's some weird stuff happening, some interaction that I don't understand. And... It's confusing. I'm confused. But these things will get it better. Um, let's not dwell on that for too long. Um, I want to quickly show you a couple things we can do. Um, the first exciting thing we can show is... I kind of want to watch what it's like on the other side, just seeing these windows moving around. Uh, the cool thing, I, I, dot, w, tape, this will become obvious in a second, dot help. It won't be able to print everything, but that's okay. So here's a bunch of commands that we can send it. We can control whether it's recording, whether it's playing, we can reverse it, we can control the speed, which is like linear speed, we can control Frequency, which is like volt per octave speed. The pre-level, which is actually the erase head level, I gotta change the name. Monitor record. Head order is the echo mode, I gotta change the name. I gotta make these notes. I2C names. Um, and then you now have some like loop start and end stuff. So basically, while the tape is playing, you can trigger the beginning of a loop and you can trigger the end of a loop. Um, you can then do the, the extension thing, like you make it bigger and smaller. And then these last couple are the ones that will allow you to make, basically implement cues yourself, is you get this thing called timestamp, which will jump to a time in seconds, in absolute seconds, um, across the whole tape. And the second one is the same thing, but relative to the playhead. So that's that's more if you kind of want to like skip through some sound. Um, 
Yeah, that's the kind. Of, that's the way. It's gonna be teletype. I'm not a, entirely sure how it's gonna work on teletype because this seconds number is gigantic. Um, because it's like, I don't know if it's six hours or eight hours or twelve hours of tape. Anyway, it's a lot. Um, and it requires a 32-bit number to speak to, but Teletype only speaks 16-bit numbers. So, maybe there is a way... I'm not sure. Um, but in general, it should it should be at least possible to a one-second uh, granularity. I don't know if we can get my like millisecond accuracy with Teletype. But, why don't we demonstrate this? Try my best to make something happen. So let's say let's turn play on. Ooh, and there's three of them here, and they're all playing at once because they're all on the same address. Um, so we can we can press play. Why don't we? One thing I've been enjoying doing is making an alias. So I'm gonna call I I dot W take this now just T. So I can now say T uh, loop start and then loop end. And we're now looping. Um, so let's let's turn record on. So we can also control it on the level. So I can just... That's basically turning off the VCA. Um, there's something weird going on. It's a different module than I've been testing with, and it's in a different case. Um, and I don't have a debugger hooked up, so I can't really know what's going on. Um, but that's that. Um, but yeah, you can you can hear how I can do all kinds of fun stuff like... Yeah, set like really uh, a pretty precise control over these things. This is all like floating points, so you can go like this kind of thing if you want. Um, and everything has getters, so I can say um, get the current timestamp, and you'll see over here it tells me it's 32 seconds through the tape. So the, the way you'll use this is basically, I'll, I'll make a tiny little script over here. Um, I want to make a new uh, receiving function, so I can say i i w tape dot event um, is a function which takes a new event type and a value. this but what I was thinking is you'll you'll basically save this so ts equals zero and then here ts equals value so if I run this um, if I now call that same function the t dot get timestamp
it is weird. Oh, it's frozen. No, it's not frozen. It's stuck. Ooh, maybe there's something else going on here. Oh, it's because it's talking to these other two. It's it's confused about which one to talk to, and like that's that's an issue. I don't imagine you're gonna have all three running at the same time like that. But um, now we have this thing. We've captured it, so now I can print the value in TS. And oh, I can't have this thing working. That's fine. Right. Print TS. So that's basically showing how Crow can kind of like remember the timing. Um, there's more to that, but I think that's going to have to kind of capture it at the moment. Because I need to get a glass of water, and there's so much more I want to show you, this may be more exciting. So I'll be back in 20 seconds. Okay, yeah, drink some water. If you don't, if you haven't drunk any water today, you can turn that around right now. Ooh, will there be scripts? Um, yes, there's absolutely going to be a knapsack of scripts. Um, most of them are going to, for me at least, are going to revolve around Crow. Um, but. I really want to make some for Nods, and I also really want to make some for, um, for Max, specifically for Ableton, so you can kind of have everything talk to each other, because um, I think it's an interesting kind of connection. So um, without further ado, ado. Um, Let's show the next thing. So, the next trick. I really wish we had the good camera here. Maybe it'll work again for 10 seconds. No, it didn't even work 10 seconds. It was like 2 seconds, right? No, this is the wrong phone anyway. Um, it's fine. Three fingers. Record, play, loop. And you'll see... This light up here, they like charged up, and then they got to a certain point, and they started flicking. When they get to that point, you can let go. Um, and at that point, you're now looking at the engine selector. No, it's okay. Wow, I'm so sweaty. I'm really sorry for that. That's just the reality of being myself in this heat. If I hide down here as well, it feels better. <laughs> now you can't see the module. Okay, I'll just have to live with that embarrassment. Um, so, this is the engine selector. The bottom lights are turned on. That's the record lights. That means we're in tape mode. But there's two other modes. The first one... Let's do... Let's do... We're gonna do the loop button. So this, we'll click, up, we'll click up here, the lights show up, and then we basically hold down and like charge it up until it flashes and it'll... It'll load us into delay mode. So what's the big deal? Delay, whatever. Isn't, can't you do that with the tape? 
Yes, you can, but there's so much more you can do. Um, and there's two other modes, and they both kind of have this, like, general idea of... Rather than the buttons being actions, the buttons are parameters. And this might... This is probably going to feel a little bit uh, manually, as in you're going to need a manual to do it, but the cool thing is there's only... nine parameters for the two modes so but they're pretty complex and they're pretty interesting so um this is delay there's some funny stuff going on with the recording but i'm sure it's my fault i just don't know it seems different to what i was hearing earlier today and that's confusing to me but let's persevere okay so I'll walk you through the parameters. So, um, why don't we do that by basically playing a melody on Mangrove. I'm going to add um, a... What's the best way to do this? I never quite know how to do this stuff, but that's okay. Metro one time equals... Point three. Um, the event is a function that just triggers output two, and then we're going to start it. I need to configure output two to be a uh, AR. All right, so hopefully, um, we have one more cable. Turning the sound off. That's the that's the echoes coming out. So that's a long delay time. And it's modeled like in a bucket brigade style. So is it halving and doubling? Uh, it's continuous. So, I'll put some sound in. Oh, let's do the second parameter, uh, which is feedback. Which you just press record, and you basically like alternate between the two. So you press it, the first time you press it, it's the left, it's the time control, the, the primary control. Press it a second time, you get the secondary, which is feedback. So, time, feedback. Those are the classic delay parameters. Um, I can just... I can hold the toggle to like slide it up or I can kind of tap it to get little increments. I've just pushed feedback all the way to maximum and so now it's basically an infinite looper and it'll stay exactly at that point. Um, so I can like push sounds into it. So, as much as the new tape mode doesn't have as many functionalities, a lot of the stuff that you used to be able to do with the regular mode is easier this way. Um, and there's a few reasons it's easier, which we'll get to. But here is a great example where it's like, you want to do that like layered looping thing, like this is a really nice way to do it, I think. And while this is happening, I can change the speed. It's a little, uh, not very dense, but... At 
the moment we have the speed a long way down, and so as a result of that, you get a pretty like degraded sound because it's doing a bunch of sample rate reduction, just like in a bucket of game where things go down. It doesn't have it has very minimal anti-aliasing, so you get a lot of these like digitally artifacts. Um, but that's the kind of like that's the intro. So those are the kind of the two classic params. The next thing we have, uh, play. The left light is a low pass filter in the feedback loop. It's not currently working, so it's it doesn't do anything yet. Um, but if you press it again, um, this is like a modulation amount. So let's put some sounds back in the delay. The delay. Wait, before we do this. Let me just turn the, the mix, change the mix. So that's the, the left of loop. Uh, I can just, it starts at like 50%. I can hold it all the way up and it now is like 100% wet. It feels very quiet. Okay, so... This is now like an infinite loop. Oh, okay, it's decaying slowly, but... It's basically like, just layering and layering. What I can do now is with play, um... With the, the modulation amount, I can kind of introduce like a vibrato effect. Or more of like a slow, like, flangy phase of it. Um, it gets pretty dramatic if you take it too far. It's a little weird. This parameter is bipolar. The middle point uh, is no modulation. As you turn it up, you get increasing amounts of modulation at like that vibrato speed. But if you turn it down, you get like a way slower like. So if we just go. Warming effect. Is there a way to snap values to zero? There's something I'm thinking about. I'm not sure. It doesn't work yet. But I kind of love the like subtle modulation thing. Always. This stuff uh, is all. It's linear modulation, and that might seem like academic, but it's interesting in that it's highly interactive with the speed of the tape machine, the speed of the, the echo, the delay, whatever you want to call it. Um, right now we're at a pretty fast speed, we're pretty close to the maximum uh, sample rate for the, for the delay. But if you, if you slow it down, basically it increases the depth of the modulation. You also hear those big slews, and that's like the that's the kind of that classic Parker Brigade thing where the old delays are changing speed gradually. So now... Now this is the modulation. It pretty much stops it. But we can... This is the same thing with playing, uh, playing with the faster modulation speed. So you can do some weird stuff. Um, the last simple trick is 
guys. Uh... Freeze. So I've turned the sound down. The feedback isn't at 100%, but it's just locked in. I can like play more sound in, but nothing's gonna come out. It's not being recorded, basically. And so that's what Freeze is really good for. Um, while we're here, let's show it. So, we have this uh, alt parochial signal, right? So, the same way, I can map the CD by holding the code while I plug it in, and we want to map it to... So that's playing the delay buffer now with the same buffer opportunity. So there you are. There you are. There you are. We can unfreeze it by just flicking the toggle, and that basically re enables recording. Cool. Okay, there's a couple other things. The first one. Which do we do first? Looping. So you can do looping in a more... You can do a looping in a similar way to the tape machine, right? So let's sequence the mangrove again. So I press play and loop together. so it fits. Basic, but feels good. Um, and the next one is the trick, this is the, the, cool, the cool bit, which maybe I should have demoed at the beginning, is play and record, which allows you to shrink and expand the buffer size. So I press down, it divides it in half, and it keeps going. So this is a really, really short delay. Um, we can turn the feedback up a little. So now you get those like uh, comb filtery things and stuff like that. Let's take the decay a little further. shifts between those two things. It feels good. You can, if you slow the tape speed down, you can make it loop up to 20 seconds. That's how long the, the delay time can get. Um, and then you can use that 20 seconds and divide it into sections. There's I2C commands for all that, which I think makes it a little more uh, uh, predictable. Or reliable? Able to be understood, maybe, is the correct phrase. Cool, yeah, so... Voltage control, yes, the classic, we need to do... Let's clock the delay. 
So I want to map it to loop and play. destination is controlling that zoom control which I think I've never played with one but I think it's similar to the make noise uh, what's the new module mimeophone they have a control that like cuts up the buffer it's a similar thing it goes <laughs> like trying to find a cable it's like right in front of me 523. Cold Mac. This is the classic just to demonstrate the idea. So we can map it to play and record, which is the, the zoom essentially. Um, so as I. As I turn it up, we're going to get smaller and smaller slices. sounds. I'm sure you can make something more exciting than what I just did. That's I2C control. Let's do that. Um, w... I think it's W del for delay. Let's have a look. Okay. So... Um, so we can do the D equals I, oh, I should actually use one first. Um, basically we can do everything we just did with the panel, we can do directly from, like, over I2C. Um, that gives a lot of functionality, but it's like, it means you can do some more kind of interesting stuff, like, cons you can construct some cool, uh, uses. No, it's not the right word. You can make it do cool things. What's... What should we focus? So there's a couple extras in here that... Well, there's one extra. 
a few things in this aren't completely finished because I wanted to kind of focus on the sound stuff before the I2C. Um, so I'm trying to think what's the best way. I'm going to just sample a straight... Um, just a tone from Mangrove, right? And I'm going to freeze that. So now there's, like, the mangrove's plugged in, but it's not sending any sound. It's just, that's the buffer inside. Um, so we can do all the classic stuff, like we can sequence it. Um, like, let's make a new metro. And let's say... This is kind of whatever. You're not super excited, right? Um, that's because our buffer time is really long. It's like a rhythmic thing. So this is basically just sending a pulse of noise into the delay line. Um, but if we decrease 
the um, the size of the buffer. We'll start to get these like string synthesis sounds. And we can do that more precisely using this uh, command called time, where you can basically set a specific uh, time in seconds for the delay line. So let's set it to 5 milliseconds. And there's one more ITC command coming, which is decay, um, which is a more manageable version of feedback for this kind of setup. But Let's set it to 4.5, so this is out of 5. It's like a 5 volt range. And so here we have essentially string synth sounds. Mm. I'm going to drop it an octave. Now I can use a use feedback to control the decay. I'm really excited for the low pass filter to be done because it'll make these sounds a lot more natural and that's decay. Um, but I just haven't had time for it yet. What's next? Uh, oh, right, and so here is a great opportunity to demonstrate the modulation. Um, so I'm going to set the amount of modulation to just a tiny bit. Ooh. I feel like it sounds like video game music to me. I think this would be really nice with uh, another. Oh, why am I pulling that twice? That's not good. Another timer that's phasing a little bit. We'll use the same, the exact same thing otherwise. So. so it's only monophonic, but. It'll be kind of interesting like this. And then you can also control, in a way that you can't from the panel, the rate of this modulation. So you can get these really nice fast things happening. And this is like bolt per octave. So this will be a really slow, like, drunk sound. And then it's all modified by a positive or negative on amount. So this will divide it by 10. So you can imagine the slowest rate with the negative modulation is just going to be like a stupid long modulation. just becomes like a weird... I hope that's the YouTube capture from this video. Okay, so that's the basics. Um, I promise I'll have actually nice musical examples at some point, but to me this is like... I don't know, this is kind of... Uh, it's a bunch of new interesting things. So, it's already 5.30, we gotta keep pushing. So let's go back to the engine selector. One, two, three. Charge it up. Let's go to play mode. 
Whenever you change innards, there is that click. So it's probably not going to be something you want to do on the fly in a live performance. It's something I can likely fix, but um, it's definitely not high on my priority list. Um, okay, so what is this third mode? What does it do? I'm so confused. What's the whole point? I'm just being ridiculous. I'm actually trying to read what you're writing instead of hosting a show. Is this a show? Is this entertainment? I really... I'm, I'm unconvinced. To address multiple widths. So, what I will say, in terms of I2C addressing the different modules, when they are in their different modes, they are all on different I2C addresses. Similar to how like Ansible does it with its different modes. So you can do one of each, no problem. And two of each is forthcoming, but it's not yet available. And having one with tape mode control other widths in tape mode is something I really want to build, but I don't know if I can do it. It might have to be like a community thing at some point in the future. Um, that's the initial thing. Okay, so what does this mode do? What is, what is under the play button? What is hiding? And I'm going to start with... Wait, maybe I should start by patching something like... Yeah, let's do this. All right. I want to bring it back to... Hey, we can actually use this. Instead, uh, I had such a great patch for this earlier, and I don't remember what it is. But I think that'll work. Mm, that's already correct. And then... So I'm hoping for some big reveal, and you're going to be all super disappointed. And that's also correct. So, those, these are the default mappings. Um, Is this going to do it? I think it might. Let's hope for the best.
before I say and, let me just, let me just do it. Check this out. It's all controllable by CV2. And I think that's what makes it interesting. So, oh wait, is that what I was doing? Oh my god, I didn't even realize. So, even though I was like controlling a bunch of stuff with Druid, um, those notes were all just being triggered with CV these two cables. So I'm sending a volt per octave signal on the top one, and I'm sending a pulse signal on the bottom one. Um, so you can use it with any sequencer, but you can set the decay time, so the, the LPG time, low pass gate time. Um, you can make it really slow so that those notes overlap each other. It has four note polyphony at this point, but uh, it might go to five. Um, the algorithm's a little expensive compared to like what's in Just Friends. Um, so, yeah, you can do a lot of the Just Friends synth stuff with this, but it has this focus on just intonation-based, um, 
with bass tones, right? So that was all being triggered with this stuff. We we can change that. So you can free up one CV jack by instead of using a gate into this or that, you can plug the gate signal into the in jack. And it's like, in is an audio input, but you can assign it to be a gate, uh, well, a trigger signal technically. Um, so this would still, this will still work and it'll allow us to CV control a really interesting parameter that I wanna show you.
always happens. Did it not? Event, next note, next note's down here. Metro start. This is why. You get to give it a velocity as well. Oh, let's go a little lower. Attack release mode, it means you don't need a, a gate off. It'll just do one pulse. Just to prove to you that the I2C stuff's really snappy, let's try this. And this is, I think, is like what I'm about to make an album out of.
one minute to six o'clock. I think that's the sneak preview. Realistically, I'm not going to be able to post this up until tomorrow. I'm sorry to tease like that. Um, but I think it's cool. It does a lot of cool stuff. Um... I think the delay stuff is really great as like a set and forget effect kind of thing. If you want that, it can have a lot of character with the modulation stuff. Um, the tape machine, I think is still going to be a really great thing, especially just as a, like a recorder, you know, a like sketch pad with overdubbing. I think like that's, it's kind of, that's what I was trying to carve out with the feature set is like really just dial it in to make it great at being an overdubbable sketchbook of ideas. If you want to do live looping, it makes kind of more sense to use the delay mode. Um, but the synth, this, I mean, to me, like having like a, a poly synth that's like sequenceable, like from, from Crow in 2HP is kind of, like, I want to have three of them just doing that. <laughs> um, but yeah, so... That's that. In in terms of... People have had a lot of issues with the original version, like, modules not turning on. The reason, as far as I'm aware, and I've done a lot of research, is that the SD cards sometimes take a long time to boot, and with the old driver, it would basically fail and like it wouldn't know what to do once the SD card didn't work. Um, I turned these on today and realized two of them didn't have SD cards in them and so they just didn't turn on and I'm gonna fix that so that in the circumstance that your SD card dies, your SD card holder breaks or it's just no longer working correctly, um, rather than the module being useless, uh, it'll just basically like kick you back to the select the engine selector um, so you can at least use the delay and the synth mode because the delay is all running in RAM it's not using the SD card um, so I feel like that should kind of it's not the best thing in the world but uh, the reality is you know these SD cards they're only really made to be written over a couple thousand times on the same piece of tape so if you have a tape, you have a, a loop, and you leave it playing for two days in record mode, like, you're really wearing hard on the SD card. 
and at some point I feel like it's necessary to be like they like guitar strings you got to replace it at some point um like these SD cards aren't going to work forever but that doesn't mean they won't work for a long time and they won't sound really good and I think this new update really does a lot to do that um let me see this any quick questions Is there a way to route the synth stuff between modules within the code? I'm not sure what you mean. Do you mean like from this, the with synth into the with delay or the with tape? If that's what you mean, no, but I have thought about that. But to me, that's like a version three. That's not a version two. Um, that's like a huge endeavor. And that's like kind of getting into like OP1 territory and the module's just plain not expensive enough to spend another two years developing it, which is the reality. Um, replacing the SD card should fix that. Indeed, uh, and then the new firmware will be less sensitive to not-so-great SD cards. Um, basically, all of the... Uh, a decreased... How much data is being streamed because now data is being stored as 16 bit rather than 24 on the tape, um, which helped a lot. And the whole like buffering system is totally rewritten. A lot the playback engine, a lot of it's from Softcut, heavily inspired. Praise to Ezra. Um, his yeah, Deco is really amazing. Um, I have learned so much from it. Um, but yeah, so it's, I don't know, it's all in there, it's all happening. So with that, with that, I will bid you adieu. Adieu, wait, I had it wrong the first time and wrong the second time. Um, without further ado, I will bid you adieu. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go and Try and look less disgusting. Thanks for hanging out. And, uh... Tomorrow, I'll put it online. It won't be any more fixed than it is right now. But, I would absolutely love if people want to try it out. And, if you want to give some feedback, I would appreciate if it, um... If you could make... You tell me how to reproduce the issues you're seeing. But also, like... No need to go into, like, stupid depth because there's a lot of things that I know are issues already and, like, don't, uh, don't worry too much. We'll get there. Okay. Farewell.